Welcome everyone. I'm just going to take a little time to enter everyone before I start because I'm going to do a mini grounding meditation for us all to connect and then I'll be going into a presentation. Um, well, some of you, a lot of you are new to my, my offerings and some are familiar with my offerings. So I do um, shamanic healing work. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I teach the Egyptian mysteries and shamanism. I'm a mentor in shamanism, but specifically the Nedaru, the Egyptian lineage. And, um, and I lead spiritual pilgrimages to Egypt. So this is uh, in a nutshell what I do. And I'm gonna, I love taking these ancient Egyptian festival holidays and doing a teaching around it. So it has a meaning and a teaching and I incorporate a little bit of sound um, and I try and pull these themes through to everyday life as to how you can optimize your well-being and spiritual well-being and then also let you know of the way I facilitate um, transformative pilgrimages. I call it pilgrimage medicine to Egypt. Seeing that, so, you know, it's the start of the new year. So I'm just before I'm going to start with the grounding meditation while maybe a couple more people may be joining. So traditionally, on this day, we have, it's the voyage of Hathor to see her seven sisters. So that's the traditional Egyptian, ancient Egyptian festival on January 5th. And it's all about gifting, sisterhood, childbirth and fertility. And you know, Hathor is the goddess of the sky. And um, so that's why I wanted to blend in the celestial uh mysteries um with hawthor you know she, I'm, I'm very connected with hawthor and i've had quite a few transformative experiences in her temple and dendara and i'll be sharing about that as well and yes so it's the new year and you know obviously we're going to use this also as a way of just calling in what we want to manifest and how we want to align to um what we want to change in our lives and how we can show up in a in a more aligned and aligned with our soul purpose and so forth. So just for us to kind of like come together and ground in, um, I want to welcome, I'm going to just do a little mini sound meditation. So, so just close your eyes, grab some water, and I'm going to use a lot of A-bowls, which is more of the higher chakras, you know, your crown, and your pineal gland and your third eye just so that you can transcend to the higher realms um, so just close your eyes and just come to this space and also connect with all those that are sitting next to you even if it's we connected us in space and time, right? Even if we across the globe, just feeling into this collective and even those that are not here present, but that's going to be listening to this recording later. We're connecting with them too. So just breathe into this space and into what's present for you right now, what you're aligning with what you want to call in and also um, ask we always ask permission when we enter these mystery realms permission and guidance and protection of the Nedaru and our guides and and also just asking permission to enter with these mysteries and these sacred sites these temples giving thanks for that and honoring that process. So take a few deep breaths and just connect to where you're sitting right now. You want to imagine an auxiliary cord going deep into the center of the earth. Because we need to ground first before we can open up to the cosmos sky 
to that infinite possibility. In Kemetism and ancient Egypt times, we all say, as above, so below. So it's all connected and we are all connected. And you can pull this energy into you so as you release out everything you know we come in there's so much anxiety that builds up before we go into the holidays and over the holidays into this new year that we are exhausted when we come into the new year and then we have all this pressure on ourselves of like oh we need to manifest this and do this and we saying yes to this this is actually my um, adrenal bowl. This is the solar plexus. And it's just to give us that adrenal support for that burnout. This is a time of inner introspection, you know, the winter time. Instead of taking more on, what can we actually let go of? So that we can connect with the night sky. And that infinite possibility and allow space for anything to transpire. Egyptian times the sky besides Hathor as the goddess of the sky it's also Nut the sky goddess holding us hmm so that feels nice and nourishing right so just let that all integrate keep breathing as I'm gonna start just sharing i know we might have some people still coming on um, i'm gonna be sharing my screen so that i can go into a presentation and get to the theme of today so i'm gonna share that and then chantelle if you can keep on um, letting everybody come in that will be awesome um just so that i'm not going to be able to see as I'm presenting. So let me just take this out of the way and minimize uh, all of us. Okay, great. So, um, revive the celestial mysteries within. And again, our external field affects our internal field, right? And we always have to go within. And then in that way, we can manifest um, and kind of like manipulate how we show up externally as well. And um, because of this holiday today, this ancient Egyptian holiday of the voyage of Hathor to see her seven sisters, I chose this theme of the seven Hathors and the key of life and just creating this healthy path forward um, and then talking about open house. Um, so let's let's get to it so again you know just as an intention for this new year reviving self-care self-awareness and passion so with pilgrimage i coined this term pilgrimage medicine um, and it's really a journey is really to cultivate all of this um, through experiencing these ancient mysteries and these temples and then it's also about instilling perseverance, gratitude, and kindness. Um, so um, I, I read this, I was shared this um, 
quote this week, you know, on these WhatsApp chats, and it was, the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience. And paradoxically, the acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. And it was just that rung true with me about instilling perseverance, especially when things are challenging. And I know so many people are going through a very challenging time. And just because it's new year, it hasn't shifted. It just carries on to the new year. So how can we have gratitude for what we're experiencing and the lessons learned and be kinder to ourselves, not only to others, but it starts with ourselves. And then just having this holistic overview of well-being, mind, body, and spirit. Okay, so how does this all relate to this kind of celestial principles and so and Hathor and so forth? So let me get to that. So in ancient Egypt, the time keem, keeper Pleiades was called the celestial herd, you know, the cow herd. And I'll show once I stop sharing, I'll show you I have a nice picture of Hathor as the sacred cow. Um, and they were composed of seven a, 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 a rocks, uh, cows, which is red in color, represented by the seven goddesses that uh, nourished those who were devoted to, to her or to them. So it's observed in the night sky as a group of stars of the celestial herd, Pleiades, the seven immortalized sisters. And this was in the Greek mythology, Zeus, actually save these sisters um so it relates to many of ancient traditions and um and the open cluster in the taurus constellation close to aldebaran which in arabic means he who follows as the primary red star and the eye of the bull so the constellation rises and sets just like our seasons change there's the helical and achronical rising in the winter and in the northern hemisphere and in the summer in the southern hemisphere with the life cycle of the bison so arthur arthur is the last month of the three seasons of ancient egypt related to inundation you know the flooding of the nile and the, um, she was known as the heavenly cow it's also a fertility goddess the goddess of the sky the goddess of the stars um, beloved of the living and the dead um, so we always refer to also you know just like when we die obviously we're going into the underworld but you know also related to the stars and she's the protector of women and children goddess of lovers and music so here she's depicted with the cow horns and the sun surrounding the sun disk as a headdress and actually um, she was initially before Nut seen as the one to birth the sun before uh, and this was uh, dating back to the second dynasty so raising the sun with her horns she was wor worshiping Thebes which is now called Luxor it's one of the destinations we travel to during my pilgrimages and um, she's also known as the goddess of the uh, the dead um, and you know the, in the western desert in Luxor that's where we have the kings and queens um, you know burial uh, the valley of the kings and queens okay so she represents the elements of essential for life water air and the sun so this is at her chapel in um in dendara um near luxor luxor it's about an hour away hour and a half away from luxor okay let's see i just skipped accidentally pressed the wrong one okay there we go the seven hathors or seven cows and an um, Osiris Apis bull, as in the Serapium at Saqqara. So Saqqara is one of the oldest um, uh, pyramids, the step pyramids. So there is the Serapium where they used, where they've buried the Apis bulls. And the Pharaoh used to um, 
have to chase the bull to be reinstated as the pharaoh. So this is just this bull and cow energy but also related to the stars and you know there was it was depicted in offering tables and in the spells in the book of the dead named the sky storm so i'm just going to show you this little little clip i'm going to have a few of this let me just see why okay there's this one. so this is dendara arthur's temple in egypt Okay, so let's talk about the key of life, the Ankh, sacred symbology, and it's also known as the key of the Nile. And the Nile is seen as life sustaining and was all of Egypt was very heavenly dependent on the Nile um, when it was flooding still before the Aswan Dam was built. And it relates to immortality, cohesion of the heavens and earth. And this is actually at Karnak Temple, and there's the seven keys, the seven gateways. Um, and we go, it's, it's seen as a, um, you know, a portal, a vortex, a portal. So we go there for activations and initiations. And, um, and that's in Luxor in Thebes. And also the Ankh is also similar to the Knot of Isis, which is this intricate bow also seen as the original cross and interlinking the male and the female aspects There's also that uh, divine masculine and divine feminine aspects interlinking interwiving and that we all have that and actually in ancient Egyptian mythology. We have the car and the bar so that's your spiritual body and your physical body and it is the opposite sex, so if you were woman in your physical body your car. That's your bar. Your car is is masculine, or this is the way they viewed it. Um, so now I just want to relate these themes to owning your power and and just talk about this methodology that I use in my coaching and mentorships, uh, spiritual mentorships and shamanic mentorships is dive into the sore methodology of sacredness, stillness, observers. Uh, oneness, awakening, and action, right, rebel, and rise. So just, um, you know, this theme of sacredness and silence to approach everything and all we do as sacred. 
anything that's even so mundane in how we interact with anyone. And this is really what I've learned in my uh, shamanic um, uh, spiritual practice and studying with the Algonquins in America as well, is seeing everything as sacred, animals, people, the nature and how we interact with nature and come from a place of contemplation and inner stillness. And this is very key, especially where we find ourselves in in the seasons right now, in the winter season, that place of introspection. And then um, observance and oneness. So it's creating awareness through observing one's thoughts, actions, and reactions from an alter, alternate pers perception. So this is what I appreciate when one connects with the cosmos when one look at the stars and look at the sky and whether you look at it and study and examine it or whether you do access it through meditation uh, and more from an ethereal element, um, it allows that space and um, for us to really have that um, different perspective and a different observance and to feel one to feel one with all that is we have this terminology in african spirituality ubuntu i am because we are and it's all about that collective oneness so it's just to tap into that and that's what i love about a pilgrimage is it really takes you out of that your normal way of life so that you can actually create this space and, and experience that because we don't take the make the time to do these things anymore. And I want to honor you all for showing up today to um, show up in this way for yourself and the collective. And again, this is the theme of oneness with the collective and interwoven aspects. So there's a few of my previous pilgrims that showed up on this call and of my mystery school students. And it's just like we keep interweaving this collective theme, like we're all interconnected. And, um, and there's an alchemy that happens with that. Even you showing up here today has a specific alchemical imprint. Um, anyone that going on a pilgrimage together, it's like every single person in that group, whether you sit in a circle, has something to share and some medicine to share. And then this is actually a picture we were allowed to just before the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum opens up to go in there just now in November when I was on my uh, most recent pilgrimage and um, and I just love this picture it's just so grandeur it's just like it's like it just takes you to a whole another place and it's about this you know once we've been quiet and we've been in this place of contemplation we can actually awake and awake into action so it's that journey of the self-realization the actualized potential and then a rebirth and again, this is what we do in ceremony when we go to these places and when we encircle, just reflecting and sharing where everybody is in their journey. Um, and this allow us to step into our own power and our authentic expression of the divine. Aligned action comes from this place. Um, and then it's being supported and witnessed by um, like-minded people that's what's so powerful it's like you share in this ex um, awakening experience and you know you are friends for life or lifetimes i mean often we feel we've been together in many lifetimes or other lifetimes so this is actually the um avenue of the sphinxes and it's all it's fully almost fully renovated now it's open you can walk it it links Luxor Temple with Karnak Temple. Uh, this is where they used to do the Opet Festival, which is one of my favorite ancient Egyptian festivals. But you know, this is like, it just when it stirs up when you're in these sacred places and when you do this sacred work or this spiritual line of work um, for yourselves or facilitating it for others, you get to this point where you're reveling in and you're rising in it. So it's realizing the time to revel in the becoming. So we're always striving for more and to evolve more. I, I, you know, that's just a desire within us and we're human. And, um, 
but we also need to reflect back on how how far we've come what we have accomplished what we have overcome what we have endured and kind of like you know just give thanks for that and appreciate that and give thanks to ourselves that we've gone through that i know i've had five pregnancies and three three uh, births and i had two home well three home births and you know just to have that appreciation of what the body endures during a pregnancy and what the body endures to give birth, to give birth to life. And, you know, we constantly going uh, from a shamanic perspective, we see this birth, death, life, you know, this cycling that happens. It happens every year with our seasons. We, so we in that now, we kind of like in a dying off death phase with the winter and then, you know, something stirring within us to, to rise up. So it's a good time to now to also contemplate on what we've accomplished and to hold gratitude for that gratitude for the being just where we are just that we can be in this moment and to revel in that truly revel that and that's what I love when I go to these sacred places is you can just be so you so present like there's no time and space doesn't exist it's like we always used to we joked we like what year is it what day is it what week is it it's like you have no idea anymore what you just in this vortex so much is happening my teacher that did this for 30 years said to me it's like 20 years of therapy in two weeks and it is like that so i'm in service of mahat and mahat is um, a divine principle of truth honor justice balance it's a natural order of balance and um you know and and then how are we showing up in that as leaders in our communities in our family to to stir inspiration so this is also what i instill with the work that i offer is we all have this we all have sacred gifts we all have a sacred purpose we all have these sacred skills and how are we bringing that to our communities okay uh, so this let me just <laughs> So this is just one of the recent pilgrims after going to Hatshepsut Temple. He was just sharing, so I just wanted to, um, you know, share that as well. A highlight of your day today. Today I had two highlights. The first one was being able to go to Hatshepsut Temple uh, during the sunrise. I think that was really, really special. Being able to get there before the rest of the crowd was very intimate, and it made me feel like I was really connected. The second part was the hot air balloon, just because I love aviation and being able to go up and see from the sky all the temples in the area that we got to see, and to also experience the definitive divide between the rich earth and the sand, and that contrast between the, the different you know, uh, landscapes was absolutely beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Would you do this again? I would do it over and over again, absolutely. <laughs> and what do you like about being on the Nile? I just want to say, um, you know, he was talking to, we went on, up on hot air balloons over the Valley of the Kings and Queens. And that's where I actually got my the name for my business. The first time I went up there, the soul and, and, this, and the acronyms that I shared with you earlier was this alternate perception that I would go up and I could see, and there was this contrast on the land. It's like around the Nile, it was very green. And then you have the Valley of the Kings and Queens is very acrid and dry. And it's that polar opposites. And that's just life. It's the dichotomy. It's the, also the masculine and the feminine. It's all these um, elements. And it was just beautiful to watch that from afar. So. And I also want to talk to you about my next pilgrimage uh, coming up um, to the Siwa o Oasis that's on the Libyan border and, and just doing these practices of, you know, the salt pools, floating in the salt pools, um, also the sweat tents, which is like a sweat lodge, but it's like they bury you in the sand 
and um, and Cleopatra's pool, swimming in Cleopatra's pool. And then also all this, like the food is just so aromatic. And I always lose five pounds when I go to Egypt. It's just, um, um, you know, very, you know, just pure, you know, non-complicated, not, you know, highly, pro you know, processed food. So, so that's what I love about that. And, um, and now I'm just going to share with you just so that we can anchor all this in before I just show you the last part. I'm going to share with you a meditation uh, and I call it stellar consciousness. Um, let me just open that up on Spotify. This is um, this is my album. Angwit Ikas is my old Golquin given name, and that uh, means um, rainbow earth goddess and uh and these are actually sound frequencies i channeled for each temple in um in egypt and here is stellar magic so i'm just gonna invite you and you can certainly search on this i'll let chantelle put this in the chat i think this like word okay uh, oh okay okay um so I'll let Chantal put a link to uh, where you can download these uh, so you can listen to these channeled frequencies. But I'm going to just play this for three minutes. Um, so just close your eyes and enjoy because for me, it's always to create the experience. We can read up about the history anywhere and everywhere and watch so many documentaries. I'm very interested on the individual experience and what your specific takeaway is from it um, when you access these fields so just close your eyes and experience <laughs>
So that was my um, channeling of the seven Hawthors and the constellation. Um, let me just get back to that. So just feel all that integrating, um, you know, with sound frequencies, it can be quite intense, especially when it's received also in a place of a sacred space or in a temple or a high holies, which is where we normally go uh, on our private visits. So yeah, so I'm just going to let you, uh, I'm going to talk now about this next adventure, this oasis adventure. And what's different, every theme, all my pilgrims that have gone with me before, every pilgrimage, a different theme is coming through from spirit that I'm being guided to share. Um, and this one is really, uh, you know, like a joyful revival. You know, we've been through so much as a collective over the last few years. And, and what I've also experienced is many people just go and do the temples. But if you actually, you know, connected with the elements of the nature and the ancestors there in a, in a very natural shamanic way, and you also um, detoxed your body, by, you know, swimming while well, floating in these salt lakes and going to the hot springs and doing the sweat tent, you are able to walk the temples in a very different way. You're able to experience that energy and frequency in a very different way. doing sound dealing here at the lake i do a lot of sound dealing while we're on these pilgrimages in the desert when we go on a desert safari and that's the nighttime safari and at nighttime the cosmos and seeing the constellations are beautiful in the desert
Okay, so I'm offering um, just for the next, um, for the rest of this month, this um, special where you can save $2,398. So this is double occupancy and it's all included for the two weeks, everything, food, the private visits and so forth. So yeah, let me know, um, you know, Chantal's gonna put in the chat just the, um, well, I can also, um, the links, oh, I probably shouldn't be going out there, um, um, for that you can schedule a call with me or if you're interested in, in this adventure. And I'm offering a free shamanic healing with me if you do decide to um, join. So I'm gonna just, um, open up for Q&A's and I'm just going to leave you with this one after uh, it's traveling at kind of and, like a... um, and Chantal's also going to put the link to my that you can connect with me on any of these offerings if you want or the shamanic work that I do and this is just a lot of people have questions about traveling to Egypt right right now about safety so I'm just going to share this from one of my pilgrims just now a month ago challenging times right now so tell me what's been your experience about traveling right now yes well with my family was very concerned because of what is going on in israel right now um but we're here there we're we're on our tour we have not been affected by anything in fact for me it's made it better because there's less americans here <laughs> Uh, there's less people, and so we've been able to experience a lot more. And with Katia's group, we have had experiences that other people don't get. So I definitely would do this again, and I will be back for different tours. Different types of tours. Yeah, different themes, and we get to see and experience each time. Even this, for me, this time I've experienced something new. So. Yes, yeah, so, and it's a journey because of the connection of people. Like we were supposed to have seven people and we ended up with four of us. And it has been very sacred in our meditations and we've had profound things happening. I highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for showing up today for yourselves and to receive this. And again, we'll be sending out in the next few days a recording just so you have all this and and yeah please join my youtube channel and and on these things then you'll know be notified when i post these things and uh, i hope to see you again and happy and blessed new year and may the netaru bless you and surround you and support you and um um rabana mahak <laughs> thank you thank you bye <laughs>